Welcome back to Honest News. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word, Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Mark chapter 4, verse 1. We're going to approach this scripture as though we are there, folks, as though we are with the disciples, with this great multitude, and Jesus is teaching us. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. Hearken. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprung up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you once again, God, for giving to us divine truth, giving us, Lord, an understanding of your kingdom. We pray, God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that destroys the yoke. We plead the blood of Jesus as we minister your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As some of you know, we have been learning, my wife and I, we've been growing microgreens. And we're learning something very interesting about the roots. And so in the process of growing pea shoots, we're finding that when you put a cover of some sort on top of the pea shoots, now you want to do this with most microgreens, including sunflowers and uh, broccoli, different ones. But you put a cover on top so they can't get to the light. They can't see the light. They can't receive any light. And you put a heavy weight on top of that. And it's impossible for them to get to the light. Are you listening? And uh, in the process of them looking and searching for the light, they're growing. They're getting taller. But there's something else they're doing. They're searching for water. Did you hear what I said? They're searching for water. Not only are they searching for light, but they're searching for water. Now, why would they do that? Why would they shoot their roots down, straight down, 
Why would they go deep and deeper and deeper searching for water? Because they want to live. God put that within the plants, a desire to live. And he put that within every plant. And he put that within every animal. Amen. That's why even with the human race, when you see people that don't have a desire to live, something's terribly wrong. That didn't come from God. Amen. God puts within his creation a desire to live. Amen. Now, a plant is breathing. It's, it's, it's alive, right? It's a living organism. It's alive. And it wants to thrive. It wants to live. So why would we as farmers, if you want to call us farmers, microgrowers, <laughs> why would we try to keep those plants from the light for the first few days? Why would we deliberately keep those plants from seeing light, from getting to the light? Same reason God does it for us, brothers and sisters. To get us to drive our roots down deep. Amen? Now, this is not a separation from the light as far as the Word of God, because God doesn't keep us from that light. So what is it that God's people are experiencing? What is the darkness that we as believers experience? Because God's not going to keep the truth from us. So what is it that causes you and I to grow? What is it that causes you and I to put down roots that go down deep until we find water? Why does God, just like we put the weights on top, God allows pressure, weights, to come into our lives? Amen? And even though we have a desire to live, even though we have a desire for the light, we can't find it. And I'm not talking about the light of his word. Please listen to me. Again, the Lord does not keep us from the light of his word. I mean, no, that's the water. That's the living water. Amen? But the light that God keeps from us, brothers and sisters, that causes us to grow, that causes us to put our roots down deep, is when we don't understand why we're going through something. Amen? When we don't understand, we don't have the knowledge, we have his word that builds faith in us. Amen. We have the living water to live. But what we don't have right away is we don't have an understanding or a knowledge of why we're going through this dark experience. Are you listening to me? Joseph didn't understand it. He didn't know why God would allow him to be thrown in a pit. And for years, he would be in a prison. He didn't know why he would be forgotten in prison by a man that said he'd remember him. Years went by, brothers and sisters. And there must have been times when Joseph must have thought, God, have you forgot about me? God, did you forget about the dream that you gave me, the, the dreams you gave me? 
No, God didn't forget. God has a plan. Amen? Brothers and sisters, how many out there right now listening to this message, you'd like to understand why you're going through what you're going through? Amen. You'd like to know why you're going through this very dark experience with weight. It seems it's just weighty. It's heavy. It's because God wants you to put down roots. Are you listening? Listen. Some seed fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprung up because it had no depth of earth. Amen. No depth. Immediately it sprung up. It wasn't time for it to spring up. It sprung up too soon. Amen? While we've been learning about these microgreens, not knowing, not having the knowledge or not understanding, learning, right? First time ever growing microgreens, and actually they're coming out pretty good for the most part. But giving the light too soon, taking the weights off too soon. Listen to me. The microgreens stopped growing. Hello. Hello. They were not being forced to put down root anymore. They were not being forced to drink. Amen. So this evening, I put the weights back on, put the covers back on, took the light away. I suppose that tomorrow morning when I wake up, take the covers off, take the weights off, that they will have grown. Amen. They're searching for water. Are you listening to me? You see, when the light was on them, they weren't drinking like they should have been. Again, the Lord is not keeping his word from us people. He gave the word to Joseph. He had the dreams. Amen. He even understood them to some degree. He understood the interpretation of them. But he didn't understand what he'd have to go through. He didn't understand the process. Amen. He had no idea that he was going to be cast into to a pit. He had no idea that he would end up in a prison. Amen. He understood it all afterwards, though, didn't he? When he told his brothers, this is God's plan. God sent me ahead of you. Amen. He learned these things when he was in prison. The Lord revealed to him, gave him understanding. But let me tell you, the light didn't really shine bright on Joseph until that day when he was exalted. Amen. Listen to me, people. There's coming a day. There's coming a day. And what a day that will be. 
Listen, brothers and sisters, we're going to come into the fullness of the glorious light. In him, there is no darkness at all. Right now, you and I are seeing through a glass darkly. But then face to face. And how many know that there's no sun or moon in the city? Amen? In that city, there is no sun or moon. The Lamb is the light. We may have to endure for a while and not understand what we're going through. We may not have the the knowledge, the, the light of what we're going through, brothers and sisters, but we have the Word and we have the living water to drink, to be strong, to grow in the Lord. But you see, we don't know when the Lord's going to lift the lid. We don't know when the Lord's going to take the weight off like he did Joseph. Oh, hallelujah, brothers and sisters. It could be any day now. You could be moved from where you are in the position you're in right now, and God could exalt you tomorrow or today. Be faithful. Be faithful. The Lord knows what he's doing. Joseph learned that. God sent me ahead of you. Don't be angry with yourselves. What you meant for evil, God used it for good. Amen? We don't understand it all, brothers and sisters. Amen. And that's because if we did, we wouldn't grow. Amen. Just like those microgreens. Just like those plants. They're not growing. But they're growing now because they're searching for the light. Because they're going to go down for the water. They're going to go deep looking for water. And brothers and sisters, I have placed water there. So they're going to find the water. And they're going to drink. And they're going to get bigger. And they're going to get stronger. Amen. And there's coming a time when Brother Joseph will take the cover off. Will take the weights off. Amen. And I'll never put them back on again for those plants. You see, at that point, I will place them under the light. Glory to God. They'll never be put in darkness again. Hallelujah. And they will grow. And they'll be cut down. Amen. Now, if, if, if we put so much into that which is going to be cut down and eaten or cut down, and cast into the fire, as the Lord put it. How much more does he care for you? How much more does the Lord care for you? He knows what he's doing. Amen? He knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. Now the Lord said, If you don't understand this parable, he says, you're not going to understand any parables. That's what he said. Listen to what he says here. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? Let's, let's listen to Jesus. 
The sower soweth the word. That's what we're doing. That's what this ministry is. We're sowing the word. Amen? And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard the word, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. Brothers and sisters, is it enough to receive the word with gladness? Is that enough? According to Jesus, no. If you're out there and you're rejoicing when Brother Joseph is sharing with you the truth, that's not enough. And when, listen, and have no root in themselves, They receive the truth with joy, with gladness. But they have no root in themselves. And so endure. But for a time. Amen. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately They are offended. Amen. He said they receive the word with joy. So you, when you think that it's enough just because you're happy, because you're rejoicing in the word of God and you have no root, not enough people remember the root comes from the seed and except a seed falls into the ground and dies it abides alone but if it does die it bringeth forth fruit brothers and sisters do we allow the word of God to come down deep in our hearts and kill that old nature and cause that shell on the outside of the seed to fall off, that old man of sin to fall off so that Christ in us, the hope of glory, can shine forth. The seed of the word of God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. We're not the seed, brothers and sisters. We are where the seed is planted. And the old man of sin is that outer shell And the seed of God's word is in the shell of this old man. The life is in the word. The life is in the seed. So when the word of God is sown into your heart, it's not the seed that dies. It's not the life that's in the seed that dies. It's the outer shell that dies. Even in the natural. That which, that life of that seed, everything God put in that seed for it to become what he would have it to become is inside that shell. Amen? But the word of God, it's not sown in our heart with a shell, folks. Jesus, the son of man, is not sown into our heart. The life of the Son of God is sown into our hearts. 
Amen? And it's sewn into our hearts and the shell, the outside of the seed, is that old man. It's the life of God, brothers and sisters, that causes that old man to die. Amen. It's the life of God that puts to death that old man of sin. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus. That's what puts to death the old man. Amen. When the Lord forgives us, the blood is applied. That old man dies. Amen. But all you got to do is get back in the flesh. And you'll resurrect it. Amen. It's true. If you're not spending time in the word, keeping that old man dead. It will resurrect. That's right. How does that happen? Just feed it. Just feed the flesh. It will come back to life. Got to keep it. Keep it dead. By receiving the word of God. Keep receiving the word. Keep allowing the word of God to be sown into your heart, the life of God will take over. Let the life of God take over. Let that divine nature, amen, that incorruptible seed of the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost uh, take over. You might be the planting of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to say this again because I think it's worth repeating. Just because you rejoice in the word of God does not mean that you're able to withstand. That you're able to be Strong in a time of persecution. Amen. Boy, Peter thought he was ready. I'll die with you, he said. I'll give my life. Though all forsake you, I won't. Amen. Brothers and sisters, have no confidence in the flesh. Have no confidence in the flesh. If Peter would have put his trust, if he would have listened and put his trust in the word that Jesus spoke to him, if he really would have listened he would have received that truth, that word of God. It never would have happened. He never would have denied the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying to you people? Peter did not have to deny Jesus. He didn't have to. He had more confidence in himself, in his flesh. He had more confidence in his ability than he did in God's word. Amen. Many of us in that place tonight. More confidence in ourself, more confidence in man than we have in God's word. God's word can't fail. Can't. It's impossible for his word to fail. Not one word 
of all his good promise failed, David said. Amen? What God promised, he's well able to perform. The word that goes out of God's mouth will not return void. Listen to me. His word will rep reproduce after his kind. Are you listening to me? The divine word, the divine seed is producing something. Amen. Not of this world. That seed of the word of God is producing Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. When we read the scriptures, when we receive the scriptures, when we receive the word of God, it's like receiving seed. You listening? But what measure of the seed are you receiving? How much of the truth are you receiving? 30-fold? 60-fold? Or 100-fold? Perfection. Perfection. Only his word can produce perfection. Only his word. Only the seed of God, the incorruptible seed, the word of God can produce perfection in us. It's not by might, it's not by power. It's that life that is in that word. Are you listening to me? Just as the seed in the natural has life in it, that life produces a plant. Oh, hallelujah. That seed. That life is producing a plant. Amen. God's word is producing something in us, brothers and sisters. Amen. Forever. Something that will be for eternity. We are where the seed is being planted. We're not the seed. We're simply the garden in which he plants the seed. Amen. He plants his seed in our hearts. But only if our hearts are ready. Only if our hearts have been prepared. Only if our heart is cultivated. If the fallow ground has been broken up if the stony places have been broken up, only in the honest heart can the seed produce a hundredfold. Must be an honest heart. There cannot be any dishonesty. Amen. That's where the word of God thrives in honesty. That's where his word thrives in the honest heart. Amen. In the heart that is honest. That's where the truth thrives. Amen. 
That's where it grows. And that's where it produces the planting of the Lord. Amen. Glory to his name, people. Our heavenly father is a husbandman. He's waiting patiently for the fruit of the earth until he received the early and the latter rain. We're in the time of the latter rain, brothers and sisters. In the time of latter rain, ask ye rain. And God will make bright clouds and he'll give us rain in our fields, in our hearts, and we will have life. Life. Oh, praise his name. His word will reproduce after its kind. You understand what I'm saying to you? His word will not return void. It's going to accomplish. It's going to produce. Oh, yes. You may not see it. You may not even understand it. But remember. He's keeping that knowledge from you so you'll grow. Not the knowledge of his word. Not the knowledge of the truth. Not the wisdom of God. He's not keeping that from you. Have you ever wondered why does God Never, sh why isn't he sharing with me? Why am I going through this, Lord? Have you ever asked the question, why? Why, Lord? And you never get an answer. What's, why, why? Never get an answer. Joseph was in that place. It says, until the word of the Lord came, until, the, until his word came, until the, the Lord's word came that he gave to Joseph years before. Amen. It came to pass. The word of the Lord tried Joseph. And that's what's happening in your life right now, friend. That's what's happening in my life. The word of God is going to come to pass. The only thing that can stop God's word from not producing what it's supposed to produce is the condition of the soil. The condition of the heart. That's the only thing. It's your heart. It's, the problem's not with the seed. The problem's not with the word. Amen? The problem's in the depth or the lack thereof. The problem is You're not allowing the word of God to produce the root. Are you listening to me? Every seed has a root, at least a root, at least one root. Many plants have, and trees have many more roots. A whole root system, but it comes from the seed. What is that root? 
What is that root? I believe it's faith. Faith. Dear God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's faith. What does the word produce? It produces faith. What is it that causes you and I, amen, to reach for the living water? What is it in us? What is it, brothers and sisters, that causes us to long for the light? It's faith. Hallelujah. Faith. That's the root. Amen. Jesus says when he comes, will he find faith on the earth? You know what the world has? They have the root of bitterness, the root to all evil, the love of money. But you and I, the root that comes from the word, where we get our sustenance, where we get our nourishment, where we get the drink, the living water, where we long for the light, though we see through a glass darkly. What is it that's causing you and I to stretch and reach and long? We believe. We have faith. And faith produces hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. It's faith. God is producing within us faith, and it's that faith that goes down deep into experience God. Hallelujah. It's faith that doesn't give up. Faith that doesn't quit. Peter, Peter says, ah, I won't, I won't deny you. Jesus says, I've prayed for you, Peter. I've prayed for you, Peter. I've prayed for you, Peter. that the root in you will not fail. Amen. Glory to his name. Those in this verse we're looking at right now had no root in themselves. They had no faith. They had no faith. Just because you rejoice in the word of God does not mean you have faith. You've got to allow the word to produce faith, people. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. His word produces a root. And that root is how we connect with eternal life. That's why it says in the scripture to be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Root it and ground it in Christ, in the love of Christ. Amen? Glory to his name, people. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave me the root. He gave me the root. How many know the Bible says Jesus is the root? The word is the root. Amen. Our heavenly father gave us the root, brothers and sisters. He gave to you and I the branch. He gave to you and I the root. Glory to his name. Do you understand what I'm telling you? 
a connection back to God. A connection. It was broken. The root had been broken because of sin, because of Adam and Eve. But through the word, God gave you and I back the root. Amen. Replacing that root of bitterness that defiles many. That love of money, which is the root to all evil. Replacing that with faith. Amen. With faith. Faith in God can move a mighty mountain. Faith in God can calm the troubled sea. Faith in God makes a desert like a fountain. Faith in God will bring the victory. So have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God for the answer. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God for the answer. Have faith in God. Jesus said to Peter, I've prayed for you. After you're converted, strengthen your brethren. I've prayed for you, Peter. I prayed that that root won't fail. I prayed that that faith in you will not fail. That's the only connection, brothers and sisters, that we have with God. That's it. That's all we've got. Faith. And what does Jesus call the generation he was in? A faithless and perverse generation. You know what this is? You know what generation we're in right now, brothers and sisters? A faithless and perverse generation. But some, a few, have faith. And not just 30-fold, and not just 60-fold, but some have a hundred-fold faithfulness. That's what it's going to take to be his bride. Faithfulness. Not enough you're called. Not enough that you've been chosen. You must be faithful to be his bride. Not going to be married to unfaithfulness. You've got to believe him. You've got to take him at his word, people. Can't be doubting God. Can't be questioning God. Amen? You can't be saying, well, God, you won't show me why I'm going through this. I'm not going to serve you. No, you just put your trust in him that he knows what he's doing. Amen. Glory to his name. The end, the end of Job's life was better than the beginning. Amen. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, you may have to suffer. You may have to go through some things. But God knows what he's doing. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Your faith that God gave you is stronger than you. That root is stronger than you. Amen. Depend on that root. Depend on that faith that was delivered unto you. Every man that is saved has been given a measure of faith. 
But you got to cultivate faith. Amen. You got to cultivate it. You got to work with God, work with the Holy Spirit, and allow that faith to go deep, 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 and deeper still. Deep calleth unto deep. Amen. You can't go too deep, brothers and sisters. That we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the height, the depth, the breadth, the length, to know the love of Christ, which passeth all knowledge. Hallelujah. How many know that the kingdom of God, that is, God is love. And when you walk in love, you're rooted in the kingdom. Planting of the Lord. Every plant that the Father does not plant is going to be plucked up. He knows those that are His. 